Okay, David, thanks for having us here in your newly opened gallery. Well, welcome to our gallery. Uh, I would like to talk, since you, you've been in this business for so long, I would like to know how do you actually started as a photojournalist? Well, it was by coincidence. Uh, I went to you in Canada. So over there, we have a very good student newspaper. Okay. So I was studying biology. Biology? Because I was helping with the paper and because I don't like writing. So I became a photographer and then I was shooting for the newspaper. Right. Uh, because of that, I covered a lot of protests. I went to a lot of uh, ice hockey, football and all that. So, you know, I decided, hey, that's what I want to do instead of working uh, or becoming a, a biologist. So that's how I got hooked up. And uh, before I graduated, I got a job in Star. So as soon as I came oh, back from you, Canada, you graduated. That's right. Okay. So uh, I came back and I started immediately with the, the Star paper in Malaysia. Then what about photography? When do you start learning about photography? Uh, I went to the school of hard knocks, meaning you know I learned everything on my own. So uh, I read a lot of books. At my time, there was no YouTube yet, so you cannot. So you go to the library a lot, yes. you go to old bookshop a lot, and go through and read a lot. So uh, basically everything I know, I think I experiment, try and shoot and learn from that mistake. But remember those times it's still film, so it was expensive to experiment. Yes. <laughs> it's not easy. Every film costs some money. Definitely, definitely. definitely. Develop the frame is exactly, and you can't get it. Time. Yeah, you, you right. will have to wait until maybe a week later to that's see right. the image. Yeah, yeah. So when I was shooting, uh, I started with Star, and then we started the H magazine, business right. magazine, and then I joined Reuters uh, in '95. So that time we had to cover the first assignment, which for me was the uh, model GP in KL. And we had to do it in film, and we had to do it manual camera. Yeah. So that was exciting. I remember the time that we, <laughs> we did the MotoGP in That's right. Johor. That's right, we and went we were, to Johor. We were developing frame on site, and, and we can only sh develop That's so right, much. that's right. The, the, you develop tank, it's yes. only three rows. So that's all you can shoot Zero the race. Is what, uh, 100. 100 frame. 100 frame. Now right. maybe 100. in 10 seconds I shot 100 frame. Or 5, 6 seconds exactly. I shot 100 frame. Exactly. Then exactly. What, what is your first camera? Oh, I think in you I had to borrow my uncle's camera and it was a small Minolta. Uh, I can't remember the model but it was a nice nifty Minolta that I think he still has it. Yeah. But for my own, the first camera we bought was a FM2. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people started with. That's right. Two actually. That's right. I still have that camera. Yeah. Then what about um, after you joined as a photojournalist uh -huh. in the start? Uh huh. And compared to later on when you moved to Reuters as a full flat photojournalist that cover everything. What is the main difference among local newspaper and uh, international wire? Well, the interesting about the star is when I join, they say, oh, since you have a degree, why don't you become a reporter? But I says, I don't like writing, you know. Photography is my passion. But then they say, oh, if we hire you as a photographer, you pay 700 ringgit. If we hire you as a journalist, we pay you 1,001, you oh. know. So, I thought, okay, you know, I hate writing, but anyway, I, I joined as a reporter, right. but, you know, I had to go through the whole training in the newsroom and all that, but I, I managed to get myself out from the newsroom very fast and into Sunday desk. So mm -hmm. in Sunday desk, we did a lot of features. So I was lucky, I, I carved out a, 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 a niche for myself. I did this thing called In Country, where Nissan sponsored the vehicle, and my job was just to travel anywhere around the, uh, Malaysia to do a story, right. a photo essay. Yeah. Then, what is the most important or memorable event that you, you have done in Reuters or your wow. photojournalism career? A lot, career? a lot. Uh, I think many, many 
assignments are memorable. I was sent for Deng Xiaoping's funeral. Right. Uh, yeah, that was a week, a, a week, a few days after I joined the doctors <laughs> and he was away. I was like, oh man, what do I do? That's right. So that time, you know, I, I still do not speak Mandarin, but to be told, go into Baifen in Sichuan and, you know, go and cover Deng Xiaoping's funeral in his, fu in his uh, home. Yes. So I don't speak and first time in China, arrived in Beijing, went to the, see the bureau chief, he opened up the the safe, took out a stack of renminbi, give it to you and say fly to Chongqing, you know. So that was, that was scary and that was very memorable because to go in there and to see so many uh, secret police. Right. Uh, in fact, the secret police actually sat in the, 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 the very taxi that we took from the uh, <coughs> airport right. to our hotel. But uh, I covered many, many amazing stories like the riots in Indonesia, right. where they were burning down Chinatown and yes. shouting, you know, kill the Chinese, kill the Chinese. Yes. And I was suddenly, you yeah. know, I was shooting, I was covering, and suddenly I realized, what am I doing there? <laughs> it's like, what, you're, am I crazy to be here or what? Yes. Yeah. So, a lot of memorable. But I think the most craziest thing I've done mm. is when they built uh, Petronas Tower. Oh. So, when they built Petronas Tower, the very end, what they did was they raised up the very pole yes, yeah. in Petronas Tower. So that time, I was crazy enough to ask permission to climb up the pole so that I can shoot from the top. So they didn't have safety harness. I had to co cover the, f the last five uh, floors on outside scaffolding. Okay. And then once you get to the very top, the pole wasn't big. It was probably this high and went up 30, 40 feet. Right. And I climb up. Wow. And when I climb up, I was, I'm afraid of height. But when I climb up and then look down, <laughs> it was, you do not see the, the, the floor. You just see straight down, yes. you know, because of the, the height. That was crazy. And the worst thing is I have no photograph proof to say that I did it. Because oh. it was shot in yeah, film no with Reuters. No at that time. No. <laughs> so I have nothing to show that I did this crazy yes. stuff. Yeah. But then, what about from the transition of frame to digital? Was it difficult for you? Because I, I know those days we, we used to develop our own frame every day after, after assignment and slowly you move on to as a photo. The, the transition initially was difficult because the file size was so small. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The DCS was only 1.3 megabytes and you know that camera was 80,000 ringgit when I was carrying it yes. it was more expensive than my house and I was carrying two to cover mm. you know right. so that was yeah. scary to be given that responsibility yeah and you know the quality was so bad but subsequently once you improve the camera you can even now finally crop your photograph then it makes life so easy. You don't have to waste hours developing and you can see your photograph immediately. Yes. Now I say, oh, yo, the, the current photographers, they're so lucky. It's so easy. You, know, you can shoot F1 at night, you know, yeah. no problem. The autofocus is so fast. Yeah? If you haven't done F1 manual focus, you know, I say you're not here, you haven't experienced you know, the, the pressure of shooting and shooting it in you know one two rows three rows to get the shot yes the, and what do you think after so many years people were talking about oh uh, photography is is changing especially right now our tools of creating images is not only from a traditional digital camera or even from camera it can be from a handphone or from your drone, like all these images yeah. were created by drone and there were a lot of uh, successful Instagrammer. I always say like we are creating a moment of history yeah. split, yeah. split second, but yeah. what do you think about the, the changes? As a photographer, your job is to capture something that your viewer has not seen so that's your job if you can do that, you will always have a job so what I do is, you know, I started as a photojournalist and then the world evolved. 
you can't make right. money in yes. news. Nobody wants to pay for news. So what do you do? You find an option. I'm lucky. I was lucky. You know, we, we came back to Penang two years ago and, you know, we discovered how beautiful Penang is. I was lucky. I started with drone uh, again and then with a different perspective, we managed to come up with a book uh, and that has, you know, kept us going. And slowly with that, we have uh, able to find a, a, a small niche that we can survive, you know. We have a gallery now in Penang, uh, you know, doing okay, you know, able to sustain what we are doing and able to support what we are doing. So, for for photographers out there, find don't do what everyone is doing because if you do that, you can't make money. So find something a niche that you want and exploit it. We are now going. After Penang, we are now going other states and hopefully Malaysia. We were lucky that because of one book, people are now inviting us to go overseas. So we, uh, we did Myanmar. So uh, it's always a possibility. Right. So uh, my recommendation for photographers is you know, look into yourself and see what you like to do. More, most importantly is you must be able to shoot, passionate in what you shoot, uh, so that you are doing it, uh, you know, uh, day in and day out without, uh, you know, without giving up, you know. I am very, I always tell people, I'm very willing to teach you what I'm doing. You can follow me on my drone shoot, you can follow me on my, you know, outings and all that. Why? Because even if you know what I'm doing, if you're not passionate, you can't do it, you know. So that's the difference. But then... Uh, I believe there are still a lot of younger generation who still thought that uh, oh, photojournalism is so glamour, you get to go to different places of the world, see many things firsthand. But do you still think, encourage the younger generation to work as a photojournalist? Or I, I think that's a, it's a very, very difficult job now. I will never encourage you, uh, a new photographer, to say, Go and be a photojournalist because 99.99 percent you will not be successful. But what I will tell you is, make sure you can find a job that will sustain you. Use that as a hobby, and then go and find your passion. That way, you won't go hungry. Well, that's good. So uh, I can see you have just done your new book. This yeah. is our book we produced last year. It's called Over Penang. It's a drone. Uh, mostly drawn of uh, this beautiful island of ours, Penang. Uh, we are coming out with a second book called Simply Penang. So we are working on it. Uh, MCO has delayed it quite a few months, but we are coming out and that is a slightly different book, but we are very proud of it. This is more on cultural and... This is very funny. This book is about drone photography. So, you know, we shoot from very high angle. The drone can go up to 500 meters, uh, but all the important shots that we got are actually of people. Uh, right behind me, you'll see three very beautiful images, shoot shot of people during festivals. And these are the, the images that actually sells. Yeah. So we sell our images in fine art, uh, only five or eight copies. Uh, and we were surprised that people are willing to spend money to buy and acquire so as long as you're producing something of high quality and you're unique, uh, people, uh, most likely people will buy. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, looking forward, we're probably going to get you again in the future videos and to share your story. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Cheers.